Thank you very much for, you know, welcoming me this week. It's been wonderful. Um, a special thank you to um, Pastor Yusuf and the family um, for inviting me um, and for you all. And, and like I've been saying to people, you know, do pray for us in France um, because this, to be honest, is not just my ministry, it's our ministry. We're going on behalf of the UK Fellowship, you know, and I believe that one day there'll be many more churches um, from all around the UK Fellowship that will be joining us as well. So I'm glad um, to be here this evening to see you all, see my good friend Freddie answer in the building as well. I feel blessed. Amen. Um, if you turn with me to uh, Matthew chapter 24 this um, evening, we're going to read from the book of Matthew chapter 24 verse three through to eight and you know like I mentioned um, before I got saved and I was involved in crime and drug dealing and so after I got saved I had to go back to prison for things that I did and um, before I was a Christian and so towards the end of my sentence we ended up going to what is called open prison now open prison is literally that it's open prison you can open the door and you can walk out you can go home you can wake up at 3 a.m. and decide, you know what, I've had enough. I'm going home. Nobody will stop you. Um, normally on the weekend, they allow you to go home. You spend time with your family and then you come back as well. And so at open prison, something happened. There was a guy in prison by the name of Coroma. Now, Coroma only had 10 days to go of a two-year sentence. So he's done two years. He's got 10 more days to go and he's in open prison. Guess what this man did on the 10th day? He opened the door and he ran out of prison. And so as he ran out of prison, he got to the train station. The police were there. They arrested him, took him back to closed prison and added another year on his sentence. Think about this. Here's a man who has 10 days left. Amen. 10 days and he's going to be released. But the reason why I tell this story is because here's a man who forgot about the time that he was living in. He forgot that 10 days time, 10, in just 10 days, you're free. But he got lost in the moment. And now another year has been added onto his life. See, when you know what is going to happen tomorrow, it should change the way you're going to behave today. Amen. And I want to talk to you about a time that's coming for Karoma. His freedom was coming, but he didn't realize what was coming. And I want to talk to you today about a time that's coming. I want to talk specifically today about the end times and about a period in that time called the Great Tribulation. Matthew 24, verse 3 to 8, the Bible says this. Now, as he sat on the Mount of um, Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, tell us, when will these things be and what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? And Jesus answered and said to them, take heed that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ and will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumors of war. See that you are not troubled for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famine, pestilence, and earthquakes in various places, and all these are just the beginning of sorrows. Then go to verse 21, and then he says, for then there will be great tribulation, such has not been seen since the beginning of the world until this time no, nor ever shall be. Let's pray and look at what the Lord is saying to us this um, evening through his word. Father, I want to thank you, Lord, for your word today. I pray that you'll stir each and every one of our hearts, Lord, to recognize the time that we're currently living in, in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. In our scripture, Jesus is talking about a period that is about to come. And he calls this the great tribulation. Verse 21, for then there will be great tribulation, such as not been seen since the beginning of the world. Think about this. Jesus says a time is coming to this world that is worse than any time we've ever seen in history. Now, when I read that, I have a problem with that. Because if you study history, how many know we have seen some horrific things take place in history? 
You think about Nazi Germany, you think about the civil wars, you think about all the bloodshed if you study history. And Jesus is saying that the time that's coming to this world is worse than anything we've ever experienced before. And when you pause and realize that Jesus isn't a drama queen, amen. He's not one of them people that just hype up for the sake of hyping. He's saying the time that's coming is worse than anything, worse than Nazi Germany, worse than what was happening in Sierra Leone in, during the Civil War, worse than anything you can imagine. Jesus says there is a time coming to this world that is worse than anything before. Now, I don't know about you, but if I was to hear that, that should make you pause. And he's talking to his disciples and he's telling them about the end times. And so his disciples asked him, verse three, as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately saying, tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of your coming and on the end of the world? The, Jesus's disciples, they were consumed by this. They wanted to know about the time that they were living in. They wanted to know when is this world going to come to an end? They, in their mind, this was of significance to them. It was so important to them that they had to understand when is this world going to end? My worry today is that we have so many Christians that are not concerned with this anymore. We're more concerned with what money we're going to earn tomorrow. We're more concerned with how we're going to secure the bag or what house we're going to get or what holiday we're going to go on. And these things, I'm not saying they're bad, but for many of us, we're so gripped by that that we forget that one day this whole world is going to come to an end. You know, back in the days when I was in the Derby Church and um, Brother Freddie's here as well, we used to play Monopoly. And so Monopoly was funny. You know, everybody plays Monopoly. And if you want to see who's carnal in church, amen, <laughs> who's competitive, just play Monopoly. And so, you know, we play Monopoly. And so I remember there was one day there was a brother in our church called Kamar. And Kamar, he was playing and, you know, he won Monopoly funny guy man straight you know my Jamaican brother amen and so he he's winning and so he gets so excited he starts to chuck the monopoly money up in the air he's like look at this look at that and he's so excited you know he's rubbing his the money in our face he's excited yeah man yeah man yeah man and he's all, all excited after the game guess what happened it all went back in the box and so I said was it worth the hype you know that's what life is like Everybody happy. Ah, look at me. I got this. Look at me. I got that. Do you know what? One day, everything in this world is going back in the box. Amen. Your Rolex is going in the box. Everything you have, everything you possess is just like Monopoly. Boom, is going back in the box. And so the disciples had to come to an understanding. They had to ask themselves the question, when is everything going to fold over? And you know, God is so good to us that he lets us know when the signs are coming. Because he wants us to be prepared for when the box closes. And Jesus gives us many signs in the scripture. If you look through Matthew 24, if you look through all the scriptures, there's many signs. Jesus says, before this worst period in history comes, I'm going to give you some signs so that you are ready for when it comes. He gives us some signs. I'll throw out a few signs here. He says, number one, look at verse five. He says, for many will come in my name. Jesus says, one of the signs that the end is going to be near is that many people are going to come in my name. See, when we read that, we read that as a, yeah, no, that's standard. But think about the time that Jesus said this. Imagine he wasn't popular at the time. He wasn't famous. It wasn't like he was famous and he was saying, okay, at this time in history, there's going to be so many people that, it's like me saying right now, in 20 years, there's going to be all these fake moles coming. You'd be like, you know, you got a high opinion of yourself. Amen. And, and so imagine Jesus saying that. But what have we seen throughout history? Everybody coming, claiming to be Jesus Christ. And Jesus teaches us, he says, in the end times, many will come in my name. Just recently, somebody sent me an article of a man in Russia claiming to be Jesus. 
He said this, he says, I am not God, and it is a mistake to see Jesus as God, but I am the living word of God the Father. Everything that God wants to say, he says through me. This is what the man, this is in Russia. I mean, Russia was locked up recently, and even now they come out, and the guy's all there talking about his Jesus. You go everywhere. I've been in Peckham. I've seen Peckham Jesus. <laughs> I don't know if you've seen Tottenham Jesus. He's everywhere, and he's around. And so Jesus, think about what Jesus was saying. He says, in the end times, you're going to see this more frequent. He says, all of this is the beginning of sorrows. Everybody say sorrows. That word sorrows, it means birth pangs or contraction pains. Anybody ever given birth <laughs> or been around when your wife was giving birth? There are these things called contraction pains. I saw it with my wife when she had my first son, Jonathan. I said, my goodness. You know how they are. I'm sorry, ladies, to take you back there. Amen. But it's like, and it's, but what happens? They get more frequent and more intense as it, the baby's about to come. So you feel, I was watching her, she's like, every 10 minutes, and then all of a sudden, every five minutes, and then four, three, and then all of a sudden, it's like, boy, I'm just going to leave you to it, baby. <laughs> and every, and the more intense it was, the more frequent it was, was a sign that the baby was about to come. Jesus says, when you see all these signs happening more and more frequent, more and more, everywhere you look, you see somebody's calling themselves Jesus. Somebody's coming in mind. He says, every time you see that happening more frequently, it is a sign that the end is coming. You just go on Google when you get home, type in fake Jesus. You will see ones in Kenya, ones in, but you'll see them everywhere because contraction pains are becoming more and more frequent. Don't be deceived and think it was always like that. It wasn't always like that. It is becoming more and more frequent. Another thing he says will happen is wars and rumors of war. He says this will be more frequent as the Bible, as the end times come, that we would hear about wars more and more. The Greek word is the word akko, which means that you would be hearing reports of wars taking place everywhere. Again, how frequent is that today? Some of us, we take it for granted. We flick on oh, another war in Syria or oh, another war over there. We take it for granted because we don't understand the times that we're living. We flick on the news. Okay, there's a fake Jesus over there. Okay, there's a war over here, a war over there. And we're hearing these rumors again. Think about the time that Jesus said this. There was no internet. You wouldn't hear about rumors of wars. You couldn't hear this. In our age, we can hear a rumor of a war within one minute of the war taking place. And Jesus says, this is the sign that the baby's about to come. He says, this is a sign that the worst time in history is about to come. Then he says, for nations will rise against nation. That word nations is not just talking about countries. It's talking about ethnicities. He's saying race wars are going to become more frequent. Doesn't it feel like even in multicultural United Kingdom, that racism feels like it's ramping up in Europe? You look at it in all over the world. You just saw what happened with George Floyd and everything else. More and more, racism is rising up. Jesus says it is all contraction pains. It is all signs that the end is near. And my question to you today, are you like Karoma, my friend who was in prison? Do you not realize the time that you're living in? Are you just so consumed with the world, so consumed with monopoly that you forget that right behind you, time after time, things are coming closer towards the end? Some of you feel it. You feel what's wrong with this world. The bloodshed, the murder. Jesus says pestilence, disease, COVID, coronavirus. Think about, oh, and Jesus says these are all signs that the end is near. Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 to 5, it says, but know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. In other words, dangerous time. You know, we are living in the most dangerous time in the history of the world. 
You know, the world has always been under threat and there's always been, but we are living at the point now, some of you don't even realize there are nations right now with nuclear weapons, with the power to wipe out countries with a press of a button. I mean, back in the days, if you wanted to destroy a country, you send a couple of guys on a horse and, they, you know, they'll take a while. Now you can just have one leader press a button. Why do you think the leaders of this world are on edge? Perilous times. Jesus says we are living in the most deadliest time. He says this, for men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents. I mean, there's times where even bad boys used to respect their parents. Think about it. There were times where I remember even when I was on the street, even road guys, gangsters, they would see their parents and would respect them. You behave. I remember one time, you know, I, was, I had like some cigarette in my mouth. I saw my dad from <coughs> chucked it. Now, guy, what are you looking at, dad? Hey, shut up, mom. He's like, are you mad? Like, seriously. And Jesus said, yeah, all of this is going to happen. And he talks about all these things. And he says, it's going to become more frequent. And you may say, oh, pastor, mom, man, it's too much. That's the problem with us as Christians. We're too relaxed. We don't want to hear the truth. Tell me how you're going to bless me right now. Tell me how God's going to prosper me, pastor. Tell me how God's going to increase me. And tell me how everything's going to work well for me. Well, I'm telling you the truth today. And the truth is that one day this world is going to go through a tribulation like has never, ever been seen before. Jesus says, for then there will be great tribulation. See, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, it says this, and you know what is restraining that he may be revealed in his own time for the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. So the Bible's talking about the Antichrist. It's saying the mystery of lawlessness, the, the spirit of the Antichrist is already at work in this world right now. That's why there's so much evil in this world. Can you say amen? It's here. But listen to this next thing. It says only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. So who's the he that the Bible is talking about? It's talking about the Holy Spirit. It's saying that right now, the Holy Spirit is pushing back the evil right now. Think about this. How much evil is there in this world? And the Holy Spirit is still restraining evil. Imagine the day when the scripture says the Holy Spirit is going to be removed and full-blown evil is going to come into this world. This world is already evil. I mean, they're talking about ridiculous things, aborting babies at nine months old. That is wicked, amen. That is the evil. But the Bible says the Holy Spirit is still restraining evil. We read the stories about a 12-year-old, 13-year-old will pick up a knife and stab. That's wickedness. But yet the Bible says the Holy Spirit is still restraining and the Bible says one day that restraining power of the Holy Spirit is going to be removed. And then the full manifestation of evil. And then it says, verse 8, and then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with his breath of the mouth and destroy with brightness of his coming. The Bible says one day, church, this whole thing, you're going to see evil like you've never seen before. Now, the problem with us, some of you have watched too many movies. <laughs> so he's like, yeah, yeah, I've watched that movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pastor, it's cool, man. You know, I'll beat the Antichrist up. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> you know, I know, I know, I know. Everybody, you watch too many, and it desensitizes you. You know, I saw people, everybody, I saw when COVID lit, look how everybody got scared. One little virus, everybody. you telling me when the Antichrist comes, you're going to be brave. You tell me when full manifestation of evil. Some of us didn't come out of our house for six weeks. <laughs> Revelation 6 verse 2. The Bible says what's going to happen is that as the Holy Spirit is removed, seven seals are going to be opened. And I'll talk about four of these seals very, very quickly today. One is the Antichrist. He says, I looked up and saw a white horse. Its rider carried a bow and a crown was placed on his head. He rode out to win many battles and gain the victory. The Bible says that in this period of tribulation, there is going to be an Antichrist that is going to rise up. And his aim 
is to control each and every one of us and to get us to take a mark. And I hear many people again, I will never take the mark, Pastor. Me, I'm strong. Look up Boris last year. He said, everybody go home. He said, if your friends ask you to come out, say no. And what did we all do? We all went home. I saw gang members backing up. <laughs> I saw big men say, I'm going home, I'm going home. You telling me that when this antichrist rises up, that we're going to all of a sudden resist him? The control is already here. The control is already working. I mean, boys can decide right now. He can lock off. I mean, church, everybody was closed. There was no church. Nothing. Done. That's just Boris with his mad hair. That's just him. Imagine the Antichrist comes. And the Bible says he's going to enter into this world and he's going to bring control and he's going to deceive people. And you take his mark. But the problem is the moment you take that mark, you never, ever go to heaven. Well, I'll never take the mark. Let me not even go with some of the things we've been taking. Because it's all conditioning. It's all condi preparing us. The world is preparing. Listen, this world is anti-Christ. Anti means against Jesus. It does not want Jesus. So every system in this world is designed to fulfill this. That's why everything is happening. They told us, now there's some place you can't even use cash. I take, it's, it's done. It's like, where's your bank card? It's like, I, I just want to buy water. It's like, no. And that's when the mark of the beast, the guy will rise up one day. And then the Bible says there will be, as this antichrist figure is in the world, trying to compel people to take the mark. The Bible says there are going to be many other things that are going to be released. One of the things that are going to be released into the world is the Bible says there's a horseman. Revelation 6 verse 4, it says, And out came another horse, bright red. Its rider was permitted to take peace. Everybody say peace. To take peace from the earth so that people should slay one another. And he was given a great sword. Again, think about what the scripture is saying. The Bible is saying that there's going to come a time where peace is going to be snatched from this world. And this guy is going to come with a sword or he's going to release a spirit. And again, the reason why you have to pause and think, about, the Bible saying there's peace right now. And look how dangerous the road is. Look how dangerous streets are right now. And the Bible saying one day, the peace is going to be removed. And if peace is already in this world, and we have so much problems already. Imagine a world where peace is gone. Where the restraining power of the Holy Spirit is no longer there. And you walk on the streets and people are possessed by a spirit of violence. And one man rises up here. I can protect you. Take my mark. Six, six, six. Then the Bible says, after this, you know, the spirit of violence is already released. Then the Bible says another horseman's going to come. Revelation 6, verse 5 to 6. When he opened a third seal, I heard the living creature come in, and I looked and behold a black horse and its rider had a pair of scales in its hand. And I heard what seemed to be a voice in the midst of the four living creatures saying a quarter of wheat for a denarius and three quarters of barley for a denarius and do not harm the oil and the wine. What this one is basically speaking about is that this spirit is going to bring famine. People are going to be hungry. That there will be no food in the world. And again, we live in the United Kingdom. We can't even imagine that. Listen, there are nations right now where people have no food. Some of this is already working in the world. The Bible says it will be everywhere. There will be no Nando's. Some of you are like, no, that's deep, Pastor. Man. <laughs> Some of you are like, no, 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 no. Yeah, I understand peace, blood, but none, nothing. No jerk, oxtail, nothing. Uh-huh. And the Bible says, in the midst of all of that, one man's going to rise and say, I can feed you. And again, I know people say, well, I won't take the mark, you know, I won't eat. I look at Christians when they're fasting. <laughs> They'll give up after one day. You're telling me in the midst of intense violence, you're watching, you see bloodshed. Peace is gone. 
hunger. People are eating from the dustbins of this world. And one man rises up and says, I can protect you, but take my mark. And you can see how many, many will be deceived and take this mark. And Jesus said, this will be the worst period of time. This seven years will be the worst. And the problem is for us, church, the signs are so clear that this could actually happen in our day and age. Just look at every, just everything that's happening. I mean, you can't even say a boy is a boy anymore. If you say that, it's mad. It's like you are mad for saying that's a boy. Do you think we're living in normal times? We're getting closer and closer towards the end. And the Bible says all these evil spirits are going to be released. Revelation 6 verse 8, and I looked and behold a pale horse. This is another horse that's going to come, a horseman spirit. And this one's, this one's bad. This is double trouble. Listen, it says, and its rider's name was Death, and Hades followed him. This is buy one, get one free. This is, this is two for the price. Death and his boy Hades are coming together. And they were given authority. Authority only comes from God. In other words, God said, no, no, this is not just the devil doing this. God said, I'm bringing judgment on this world. He says, they were given authority to kill over half or fourth of the world. Um, the world. You see, a lot of the times people think that God is asleep. You know, when you read the Old Testament, how I many know when you read the Old Testament, God is, ju he judges. He don't play games. Amen. And you know what people do is they read the New Testament, like, oh, God got saved. You know, he's no longer that angry God. You know, back in the Old Testament, he was mean, but New Testament, he said, no, 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 no. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. You know, the only difference is God is patient. Now, in the Old Testament, you had what was called instant wrath. You mess with God, boom, you die straight away. Judgment hit you. Now, you live in delayed wrath. So now the world is mocking God. God said, I'm just building the wrath up. Keep talking. Keep mocking my name. You know, like them times where, you know, the pain that's worse with your parents is the one where they don't get you straight away. You know, if I do something, I'm just clapping. Bah! It's like, okay, cool. But it's the one where she's like, mm, keep on. It's like, oh, that one's deadly. It's like, yeah, keep, keep, keep going. Keep go and you know it's building up. That's what's happening to this world right now. People think God's gone soft. People think that God's righteous anger has all of a sudden disappeared. No, God's saying, carry on. And he said, I'm building up. I'm building up. And one day, all those that mocked and blasphemed my name, all those that ridiculed me on cartoons and, and family guy, and you, and you thought I did nothing. You thought I was just all of a sudden smiling. He said, no, no, I was building this up. All of those that will continue to teach that I don't exist. He says, one day, and this is the day Jesus is talking about. He says, one day it's all going to come tumbling down. And you're going to see judgment like you've never, ever seen before. And in the midst of this, one man's going to rise up and say, I can protect you from all the chaos that's going on. Take my ma, six, six, six. See, this is a time like never before, church. And it's not good, but we need the reality. See, some of us playing games, playing church games, playing religious games. You don't know this is serious business. And one day, the judgment of the world is coming. Seven years of tribulation. That is bad news. But I have some good news for you tonight. And it's found in the book of Thessalonians. The Bible says before this tribulation comes, before this anarchy comes, before the worst time in history comes, the Bible says something is going to happen. It says, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain, we shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. You know what the Bible is talking about? It's talking about 
about the rapture. It says one day before the tribulation hits this place, before destruction comes, the Bible says there's going to be a trumpet that's going to sound and all those that love Jesus, all those that serve Jesus, they're going to be caught up to be with the Lord. I want to say to you, I'm not afraid of when the Antichrist comes. I'm not afraid of any horseman because I know that one day my Lord and Savior, he's coming to rescue me and when Jesus comes back, I want to go up to be with my Lord. If you're with me, clap your hands and give the Lord praise. Amen. See, the Bible says God loves us so much that before he pours out that wrath, he says, I'm going to snatch you up, those that were in me. Before the, the, the releasing of the tribulation, you're going to hear the trumpet. And all of a sudden, all those in Christ are going to be raptured up. All those in Christ are going to be raptured. So my question to you today is, are you in Christ? Can you imagine knowing what you know now? Hair and do -do -do -do, people, and you're still here. Can you imagine knowing about what is about to come, knowing what's about to hit this world, and you are still here. In churches, there are going to be people that are going to be in church and be singing, I give myself, oh, oh, I'm still here. You mean preachers, preachers, it's still here. Yeah, husbands got wives that stay. Family got kids stay. And it's like, what happened? Because the Bible says only those who are in Christ is going to get called up. You know, the rapture is going to be the ultimate revealer of those who truly serve Jesus Christ. I, I tell my church, I say, I don't have a clue who serves Christ. I don't know. I really don't know. I cannot tell. But the rapture will tell. You know, watch people just, even in the house of God. See, so my question to you today is would you get left behind? I remember when I first got saved, I heard about this, the rapture, and I think it was on Sunday, and on Monday, I went to morning prayer. And when I turned up to morning prayer, the door was locked. And I rang my pastor, he never answered. I said, oh, Lord. <laughs> I rang a couple of the other brothers, nobody answered. I rang my, my, my wife, Elizabeth, at the time, my, my girlfriend, I rang her, she never answered. I rang one brother, he answered, but I knew if the rapture came, he wasn't going anywhere anyway. <laughs> so I wasn't filled with no joy, amen. And so what happened is morning prayer, it was bank holiday, morning prayer had been moved to 8.30 a.m. But the fear that gripped me that moment, it hit me. Imagine that. Imagine knowing it's gone. You're ringing, hey, pastor, what time's church? Church finished. Hey, somebody... Everybody's gone. And my question to you, was it worth it? What is worth in this world getting left behind for? What, what you tell me, one, you say, you know what, pastor, for that, I'm staying. For who? I remember I was speaking to the guys when I was in prison. I said, you tell me, you conjure up whatever you want. Would you do another 100 years in jail for if you got this? Every single one of them said, nope. How many of us today, for the things of this world, for the pleasures of this world, the sins of this world, are going to get left behind? You know, when you go up, everything remains. Your clothes, your cars, your jewelry. I remember telling my church, I said, there's going to be wigs just all over the world. Amen. <laughs> it's going to see. It's like, oh, so it's the see on the seats, it's gone. Because everything... <laughs> is going to disappear. And so my appeal to you today is how would you live if you truly live with the understanding that the end is near? The Old Testament, or in the New Testament, they used to have a word, it's called Maranatha. Everyone say Maranatha. What Maranatha was, it was like a greeting that the, old, the New Testament church would use. So you know how we say, hey, bye, cool, you're okay? Them days, they used to say Maranatha. 
And what that word meant was our Lord is coming. So every time they were talking with each other, they were reminding each other that Jesus Christ is coming back. No wonder the early church were on so much fire. The Romans tried to kill them. They said, kill us, Maranatha. The people tried to stop them from preaching or praying. They said, whatever, Maranatha. How would your Christian life change if you knew Jesus Christ was coming back tomorrow? What decisions would you make tonight? That would change everything you're about to do tonight. That would change because you knew. And that's what I'm preaching this today is that Lord give us a Maranatha mentality. Let us live with this urgency that you can come back at any time. And when you come back, I want to be ready. If that's you today, you want to be ready. Clap your hands and give the Lord praise. Amen. Let's just bow our head and close our eyes, church. I said the rapture is going to be the true revealer of those of us that were in Christ. Your pastor is not going to rapture you. It says Christ is the one that's coming back. Your family, your mother, your father, they're not the ones that are rapturing you. It's Christ. Your best friend is not going to be the one that would rapture you. It is Christ. And my question is, does he know you now? Do you have a relationship with him now? And if you don't, whilst every head's bowed and every eye's closed, we want to give you that opportunity. The signs are clear. The contraction pains are, 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 are evident all around us. Even as you go home tonight, you will see things that will make you realize the end is near. Because it truly is, brothers and sisters. So as you're here, you're not saved, you're not born again. If you ask you, you say, I want to give my life to Christ. I want to make sure that I'm in Christ. I want to be secure in my salvation. If that's you today, just raise your hand and I want to pray with you. If that's you, say, you know what, I, I know right now if Christ was to come back, I, I would not be going. I'd be left behind. I know. And we don't say this to judge you. We say this because, like I said, God's mercy is still here. This is why he's given us this message. This is why this message is here, because he loves us. He's trying to warn us before that time comes. It's not an accident that you're here tonight. If that's you, just very quickly lift up your hand. And I want to pray with you to receive Christ receive forgiveness. Maybe you're backslidden. Maybe you're far away from Christ. But you say, I want to come back. I needed this reminder. I needed to know that the things of this world are not worth it. And I'm ready to surrender my life to Christ. If that's you, just very quickly lift up your hand and we want to pray for you. Then I want to talk to us, church. Every single one of us in this room, so easy to forget that we're not destined to be here forever. It's so easy to forget that one day everything is going to go back in the box. And so we need to ask the Lord to help us to live with this Maranatha. 